In this video, we're going to be looking at a second differential lifting machine, and this is called a Western Differential Pulley. If we begin with our diagram on the left hand side, we can see that we have a compound pulley. And by a compound pulley, I mean we have a pulley mechanism with both a large and a small pulley mounted on the same axle. Now, because this is a differential lifting machine, what we're actually referring to is a difference. And by the difference here, we mean the difference between the speed that the cable is rolled onto the larger pulley when compared to the speed that it's rolled off of the smaller pulley. And I'll show you what I mean over here on the diagram. We have our two pulleys labelled L and S, and in actual fact, the size of the pulley at the bottom is irrelevant. That won't affect our velocity ratio or our mechanical advantage. But I want you to visualise for a moment, we're going to apply a force here, a force F. And that's going to be the force of our effort. So when we apply that force, any point on this cable is going to be moving in this direction. So hopefully what you can see is we're going to be rolling the cable on to the larger pulley, like so. Well, if we follow that round, the cable's moving in this direction. This means that the cable over our smaller pulley is actually winding off of the pulley. So we're winding onto the large pulley and we're winding off of the small pulley, much like with our differential axle that we saw in the previous video. So we wind on the large pulley, we wind off the small pulley, and it's the difference that affects our velocity ratio. Okay, so in the top right hand corner, we have the formula that we can use in order to calculate our velocity ratio, and it's two times the diameter of the large pulley over the diameter of the large pulley minus the diameter of the small pulley. Now because this is a ratio, we can just work in millimetres. We'll get exactly the same answer as if we were to work in metres. So let's calculate our velocity ratio. We get velocity ratio equals 2 times the diameter of the large pulley, so 2 times 350 in this case, divided by the large pulley minus the small pulley, or the diameter of the large pulley, minus the diameter of the small pulley. And when we run that through the calculator, we get an answer equal to 2.8. So here we have a velocity ratio equal to 2.8. Also, if we were given the velocity of the applied effort up here in the top left hand corner, we could use our velocity ratio in order to determine the velocity of the load. And the velocity of the load would be the velocity at which our mass was moving upwards, like so. But instead, we're going to use our velocity ratio in order to determine our mechanical advantage, and then we're going to calculate the force that we need to apply in order to lift this load. So we have another formula here which relates our mechanical advantage, our velocity ratio, to our efficiency. And the important thing here is, unless the system's 100% efficient, our mechanical advantage will always be lower than our velocity ratio. The losses due to friction and so on will affect our mechanical advantage. But let's calculate our mechanical advantage using the data we have. We know that mechanical advantage equals efficiency times velocity ratio. And all I've done there is rearrange our original equation for efficiency by multiplying each side by the velocity ratio. Well, we're given our efficiency down in the bottom left hand corner with our data. So now we can calculate our mechanical advantage because we know that it's 0.7 times our velocity ratio. And our velocity ratio is 2.8. Therefore, our mechanical advantage becomes 1.96. So what that means is the force we apply is going to be roughly half the size of the force that we can lift. So what we need to determine next is the force that we need to lift. Now the force that we need to lift relates to our mass, and because of this mass we're going to have a downward force. Now that downward force has a specific name, and it's called the weight. The weight of an object is the force acting downwards due to gravity. So we can calculate our weight. Weight is just mass times gravity. Now this formula is a variant of force equals mass times acceleration. The difference being 
Weight is the specific name of the force acting downwards due to gravity. And G is the acceleration due to freefall, often just referred to as gravity. So our weight is our mass, which is given, 85 kilograms, times gravity, which has a fixed value here on Earth of 9.81, giving us a weight equal to 833.85 newtons. So the force acting downwards due to our mass is 833.85 newtons. It's important to note that in this instance, what we're referring to there is the force due to the load. Because we're lifting the object upwards, that's the same thing as our weight. So finally, we can use our formula for mechanical advantage in order to calculate the applied force Fe, or the effort force. So we have the formula that states Ma equals Fl over Fe. And if we rearrange that equation, by timesing each side by Fe and then dividing each side by Ma, we'll get the following. Fe equals Fl over the mechanical advantage. And plugging in our numbers, we get 833.85 divided by 1.96, which equals 425.4 newtons. So as we said before, the force that we need to apply here in order to lift a weight of 833.85 newtons is roughly half of the 833.85 and that's as a result of our mechanical advantage being roughly 2. So let's consider a different scenario. Let's say we increase the diameter of our smaller pulley. First of all, let's make a note of our applied force there. We have an applied force of 425.4. And that was when we have a small pulley diameter of 100 millimeters. So let's see what effect increasing the diameter of the small pulley has on the required force to lift the object. Okay, so in this example, we're going to increase the diameter of our small pulley and we're going to increase it to 200. So underneath the diagram on the left hand side, we're going to change the diameter of our small pulley from 100 to 200 millimeters. And then we're going to repeat the calculations. So first of all, we need our velocity ratio, which is calculated by doing two times the diameter of the large pulley, which is unchanged, 350, divided by the diameter of the large pulley, 350, minus the diameter of the small pulley, this time 200, and that gives us a velocity ratio equal to 4.667. So next we can calculate our mechanical advantage, noting that our efficiency is still 70% or 0.7, and our mechanical advantage is our efficiency times our velocity ratio. Our efficiency is 0.7 and our velocity ratio is 4.667. Multiplying those gives us 3.267 this time. So still significantly larger than in the previous example. Finally, we can calculate our effort force or our applied force using the formula for mechanical advantage. And we get the effort force equals the load force over the mechanical advantage. Now just a reminder, the load force is the same as our weight, which was mass times gravity. Our mass is 85, gravity is 9.81, and our mechanical advantage is 3.267. Now that gives us a final effort force equal to 255.3 newtons this time. Okay, so by increasing the size of our small pulley, we've reduced the effort force from 425.4 newtons to 255.3 newtons. The difference being here that the effort force is going to need to move much further than in the previous example. 
because we have a velocity ratio or a movement ratio that's 4.667 as opposed to 2.8 with the smaller pulley. In effect, what we have here is an energy balance because if we apply a smaller force, we need to move it through a larger distance. And if we apply a larger force, we need to move it through a smaller distance. In either scenario, the movement of the mass is going to be slower than the movement of the applied force.